The best laid plans of mice and men, almost all of us can answer this, oft fail, oft go awry. The best laid plans of mice and men oft go awry. And whether or not you have ever read Robert Burns' poem, from where this quote comes, to a mouse, you know exactly what this phrase means. You know about setting down plans, going through all the details, setting things up, and discovering you missed something. Discovering that there's something that you needed to do that you haven't done, or that you did that you didn't need to do, and discovering that things have to change. Now, I personally can think of, well, I can think of several occasions when this has happened in my life, but one particular occasion stands out in my mind. And that was when Carla and I were going on our honeymoon. We were planning a week long to get away from the the grind, and as soon as we got back, we were going to be going to seminary, so we thought we need a nice, relaxing place. We spent hours working uh, over a few days trying to figure out where we were going to go. Well, we knew we couldn't go over, you know, into Mexico or into Canada or or something like that because Carla needed to be uh, not too far from medical care, so we made sure we were in the States, and we had to make sure, you know, that was a good spot that we both would enjoy, and so we settled on Hocking Hills, Ohio, and I'm sure all of you have heard of it. If you're ha- you have, oh, uh, no one, huh? A uh, fabulous resort town. Let me tell you a little bit about our perfect laid plans for a honeymoon. Well, we got there, and it was, as they said, it was in the middle of nature, which we were looking for. They had also promised some fabulous waterfalls. We didn't notice any on the way, but we thought, well, they did say they were private waterfalls. Well, we got to our cabin. It looked a little different than they had said. The pictures were maybe a little dated or something like that. And and I probably should have known, though, when they called it getaway cabins, what they meant. But, um, well, we went, and after our drive down there, we we went out to our jacuzzi, and the jacuzzi sitting on the back porch overlooked the maintenance shed, to which we, we waved to the maintenance guys. So far, the best laid plans. Well, we thought, well, this is not too bad yet. So we thought, we'll check out the nature. We'll find these private waterfalls. Well, we started hiking. We went back behind our cabin into the, following the trails, and we're looking, and we're looking. Our map said that we'd passed at least three waterfalls by this point. Perhaps a better word would have been water trickles. So anyhow, and to put the icing on the cake, We had planned to enjoy a nice dinner while cooking ourselves each day, but then in the evening having a nice dinner. And the nicest restaurant we could find was 30 miles away, and that was a Bob Evans, which if you don't know what a Bob Evans is, it's just a step above a Denny's. So So the best laid plans often do not work out as we plan them. And you probably can relate to this, whether it's a vacation or... the surprise party gone awry. You've set aside all the plans. You've sent out the invitations. You've prepared. And the person who's normally late shows up 20 minutes early, ruining the surprise. Best laid plans. And not always are these best laid plans something we can smile about later. Sometimes these best laid plans are things that we do each and every day. Our best laid plans of setting out a budget for the month. Good stewardship is that we start out and we set a budget, right? We set our budget, we go through, we set down, this is how much we're giving to the Lord, this is how much I'm giving to, you know, paying on my house, this is what I'll pay for utilities, this is what I'll pay towards the car, and suddenly, your best laid plans, your best laid budget, is interrupted by the brakes going out on the car, the water heater exploding at home, the washing machine flooding the house, the best laid plans. Or perhaps, as many of us, uh, getting a little older. You had best laid plans for your golden years. The plans that you had set aside, the plans that you thought to yourself, this is what I will do. And as you set aside those plans, a medical diagnosis interrupted those. What you had originally planned to do, going to visit places around the country and around the world, instead becomes visits to the doctor's office, becomes regular time spent meeting new people, but not the time you intended. And all of us can think of times in our lives where the best laid plans that we have laid down have failed. We can think of times in our life where 
things that we thought we had thought all the details through, haven't, it hasn't been the case. And perhaps right now is one of those points in your life where you can think of right now something that is happening that you had planned for, that you had intended, that you'd set aside everything for, and it's just not working out how you intended. The best laid plans of mice and men oft fail or oft go awry. And on the other hand, quite contrary to our best laid plans, we have God's plan. Now notice I didn't say plans, but God's plan. See, God's plan for salvation was, is, will be the perfect plan. God's plan for salvation is one that the devil tried to thwart. The devil tried to ruin it. He went into the garden. He seduced Adam and Eve into eating that fruit. He tricked them into believing that they would be better than God. Despite the devil's attempts, even he could not ruin God's plan. Though, See, God's plan, as perfect, and that was sending Christ in our place. God's plan, because he can see everything. He can see the past. He can see the present. He can see the future. He knows what contingencies were necessary. He knew what would happen. He even sees the mistakes we will make. And he longs that we don't. But he knows that they're going to be there. And even among all those mistakes, Christ, the perfect plan for our salvation, cannot fail. Christ, the perfect plan for our salvation, gives to us purpose, gives to us direction in our lives. And there's many people who don't know Christ. There's many people who don't know God's plan. There's many people who don't want to know God's plan. It's a scary thing. It's a scary thing because when we look at the alternative, we discover just failed plans again. As we look at the plans that we have made in our lives, those things that we have done without God's direction, we see what utter failures we are. When we try to set plans, to try and fix something in our lives, when we try to do it on our own, how successful is it? How successful is it when we have a relationship with our loved ones that we try to repair on our own and only ends up in more of that fighting more of that tension. A spouse that you just you seem to say the wrong words to all the time. A son or a daughter that you, that you just don't recognize their feelings. A parent who just won't listen to you. Wealth. We've seen how it fades away so quickly. Even the greatest stewards, the wisest stewards, we see how our wealth can fade away. Health. Each one of us has seen the effects of sin and health on our health in this world. And when we try to follow God's plan, or try to follow our own plan and not God's plan, we run into a lot of problems. See, God set up for us a plan for each of our lives. And I will tell you right now, honestly, I don't know what his plan is for each of your lives. I can't say, this is what his plan is for you. But I know that he does have a plan. I know that he has a purpose for you. And I know that the only way to know that purpose is by having a living and loving relationship with God, our Heavenly Father, through Christ Jesus, our Savior. And that means working on that relationship. It means taking time to pray and not just ask God for His will in your life, but wait for Him to answer as well. It means reading God's Word and seeing the words of, the, of old, the Psalms and the prophets, the apostles as they wrote. It may seem like sometimes their lives don't seem to reflect ours at all, but God has a message for us. As our psalm said last week, Psalm 119, 116, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Through God's word, He directs us. He leads us. Through church, not just through hearing His word, 
but through the time that you come together in fellowship. So that's one of the important things about fellowship. It's because not only can you find out the things that are troubling other people in, your, in the life, but you can find out the joys too, how God is working, how God is making changes. And not only that, 